What you're about to see is about 7,100 lines being drawn onto an online graphing calculator that form a reconstruction of an old German woodcut. In this video, I'll be giving some commentary over the graphing, but if you want to just watch it in isolation, follow the link in the description. The piece it recreates is by the artist Jost Amann. Its name is Der Formschneider, which translates as the woodcutter, and that's what it depicts. The whole ethos of the woodcut printmaker is actually fairly relevant in this context, as the printer would most often be cutting blocks to reproduce an image by another artist. Short of veering into pretension, that is essentially what I've done here. I've used the technical craft of graph making to depict a piece of art by someone else. Before I get into the why behind all this, I think it would be productive to explain how I did it. It's actually fairly simple. The graph is constructed entirely from parametric line segments. The vast majority of these segments were done in the range of t between 0 and 1 because that's the default range in Desmos for parametrics, and because it allows me an easy format for controlling line segments. Specifically, they generally look like this, with both the x and y functions being simple linear functions with respect to t. This format is easy to control because the latter part here is the position where the function is 0, and changing it moves the entire line. Then the coefficients in front of t refer to how far up and how far to the right the line goes. It's easy to trace out a large structure in this manner because, for any line in the original, I can just plant a line at the beginning of the bit I'm tracing, and then change the slope until it lands at the right place. If I want to make chains of lines that trace out a curve, that's as simple as taking the slope and adding it to the starting numbers, since that'll plant a new line at the end of the last one. Now, I will admit that I did fudge the format a bit here and there. For instance, a list will occasionally show up whenever I found a set of lines that only differ in a few of the terms of the equation. Likewise, some of the expressions contain an absolute value in one of the functions, because I was tracing a segment of the image where I only needed to fold up a line and get an angle, rather than creating two lines wholesale. These two deviations occur because I knew full well that I was going to be drawing thousands of lines anyway, and I didn't really want to waste time setting lines that I didn't need to. Likewise, towards the end of the graph, there are times that I didn't follow the 0 to 1 restriction because I saw lines that I could extend in the negative direction if I wanted to avoid drawing more lines or moving what I'd already made to make the equation follow the format. Irrelevant to all that, though, is this little heart that I put into his eye. It's made of parabolas, and I put it in there as a reference to a parametric card I made a few years ago on my old TI-84, which was one of the first times I actually drew something in a graph. I've also hidden one purple line in the graph as a reference to another Desmos project, False Sign 2, which actually has a bit in common with this one as they both use a bunch of lines to recreate something else. Link to that below. However, where False Sign was a things are not what they seem gag with a purple line as a tell, this woodcut trace was started with more of an element of commentary behind it. See, when I started doing graph art, it was back in late 2016, and I only had the idea to start because Desmos had a staff pick section for creative art. I was inspired by stuff like this graph of a stickman on a rowboat, which I had found and saved to my account in March of 2015. It was an original animation depicting a thing, and thus, what I started making followed that description pretty closely. I took pride in the fact that what I was doing was original and moderately interesting, even if you didn't entirely understand the construction of it. With the mindset of a person who was creating graph art at a decent level, I went back to the staff picks to try to find contemporaries to compare myself to. However, the only movement you can really find there is that the vast majority of what gets staff picked is just these awkward, lazy-looking tracings of other people's work. Some of it's interesting stuff that takes advantage of the mathematical graphy aesthetic, and a few of them follow enough attention to detail that I can kind of forgive their more lackluster origins. The rest, however, is just kind of awkward and ill-considered. There is an explanation for this. Most of the graph art that gets saved is being done by students doing a project in a math class. The words conic, project, and period are common on the page for this reason. Thus, it winds up being from this category that all the graphs get picked, and the weaknesses we see follow from how a student doing a school project would approach quality. Now, I get that it would be unfair to disparage children for making art that isn't at the sort of absurdist extremes that I may practice sometimes. I get that, and I think it's great that these kids are getting to do something interesting in a class that might not be engaging the more creative parts of their mind in the first place. 
However, I think the issue here is that what the front page of Desmos links to is an art gallery. Like a museum, Desmos has the freedom to choose whatever they want to put in this gallery, and what they have chosen is a menagerie of image traces whose quality is inconsistent at best. It's nothing against the kids making those traces, I encourage them to do what they want to do as well as they want to do it, but I think the graphs can do better than these, and that the central authority on such should do more to encourage such. So what have I done? Well, I've done the most extreme version of what the average person in the staff picks has done. I am a high school student who has traced an image that I found on Wikipedia in a graph using only simple equations. The image chosen was one that requires no color shading because most of the staff picks do not include shading. Now, granted, this took about half a year to complete, so it doesn't really resemble an assignment that a student would have to complete in a few weeks, but the point is that this is the kind of level that I want GraphArt to be achieving since I think it makes for a stronger creative package. And it's not perfect, to be sure. If you compare it to the original, you'll find that the fluff on this pen wound up as a straight line, that this line on the leg could have been a bit thicker, and that this line next to his mouth should have been a bit thinner if Desmos had allowed for that. However, I'd like to think that this does well enough that other people may take notice and perhaps try to step up their game a little bit. If there are people out there to beat me at chess in Desmos, surely there are people who'll be willing to take this weird little medium to great new places. As we wrap up, if you want to take me to great new places, uh, consider looking into my Twitter. Twitter is where the best and brightest graph artists seem to wind up, and I'm no exception. Likewise, I've got a Patreon page just in case you think I'm doing something that you have any interest in funding. That said, until next time, happy graphing.